Good morning, everyone. We're continuing our series of talks, going through each of the lessons in Merging with Shiva, choosing the oldest talks first, commenting on them and supplementing it with stories from Guru Chronicles on Gurudeva's life at the time the talk was given. And we're in the talk, The Power of Affirmation, Continuing that one, it's an inspired talk given in 1958 at the Sutter Street Temple. This is before he had the Sacramento Street Temple. Lesson 75, all your needs will be met. Text, this ancient tantra is often used in gaining the material things of life. Affirmations do work in this respect, maybe even a little better than in gaining spiritual awakening, because the material desires are often stronger. If you need some material possession, and if it will do only good for yourself, your family, and your friends, use the power of affirmation and see how quickly your need is manifested through one external channel or another. Distinguish carefully a material need from a desire. Desires are dangerous because it is easy to manifest material desires, but it is not as easy to assume responsibility for what the fulfillment of the desire might entail. This is why people sometimes do attract to themselves material possessions through affirmations and suffer the complications produced in their lives. This happened because they did not understand the full responsibility of having the desired possessions. An example of a material need is having sufficient money for necessities. Generate the feeling and the picture that you now have sufficient sums of money to meet every human need, but not necessarily every human desire, just the needs. Then practice this affirmation. I will always have sufficient money to meet all my needs. Repeat it once. Now stop affirming. Remain quiet, know, visualize, and then feel how it is to be open to a sufficient flow of money to meet your every need. Get that feeling. It is a secure feeling, not a flamboyant, reckless feeling not a feeling that now you can go out and have a good time. No, this is a quiet, secure feeling born of being in a judicious state of mind. Look closely at this feeling again. I will always have sufficient money to meet all my needs. Now resolve to hold yourself open to ways and means by which you will have money to meet your every need for yourself and for your family. Be open to ways in which you can better budget the money you now have. Live by the ethic, waste not, want not. Soon you will find that you begin to become secure within yourself as the vibrations of your verbal, visual feeling of this affirmation ring through you entirely. Today you will begin handling the funds you have more judiciously and soon you will begin attracting abundance from unexpected creative sources. Be open to new ideas, new people, new opportunities, expectant and ready to handle the wealth you have proclaimed as yours. Then we have my comment. The idea that I will always have sufficient money to meet all my needs sounds like you are simply focused on attracting to yourself more money. However, Gurudeva is stressing that that is not really the idea. The idea includes handling the funds you have more judiciously, budgeting it more carefully. When you are stable in that state of mind, you will begin attracting abundance from unexpected creative sources. Lesson 76, 
Consistency is essential. Text. You can write many kinds of affirmations and use them for many different purposes, but remember, they are powerful. They should be carefully worded and only used in a way which enhances your spiritual life. To be effective, they should be repeated regularly on schedule. Five minutes in the morning at noon and five minutes at night for seven days to begin with. You will surely benefit by the results you have caused spiritually, emotionally, and materially. The greatest emotional security is brought about through the affirmation, I'm all right, right now. Which quiets not only the conscious, but also the subconscious instinctive fears, bringing forth an immediate influx of spiritual energy through the subconscious giving peace and contentment to the entirety of the mind by expanding consciousness. As we expand our consciousness through the conscious control of spiritual energy, we become aware of new attributes and possibilities within our nature. Also, we become aware of the realms of knowledge within us that can be tapped during meditation or the conscious use of the intuitive mind to not only solve problems that confront us in our daily activity, but to derive creative solutions from the inner recesses of our own mind. And we have my comment. The externalized view of the affirmation, I'm all right right now, would be that the events that you attract to yourself are free from serious challenges and conflicts. That's why you're all right. However, Guru Deva's explanation is an inner one in saying that you have new intuitive abilities available to you to not only solve problems that confront us in our daily activity, but to derive creative solutions from the inner recesses of our own mind. So he's saying we're better able to face whatever happens because of these new inner resources. And we get the last paragraph text. When you say to yourself, I'm all right right now, you immediately bring the forces of the mind together. All fears, worries, and doubts cease. An influx of spiritual energy fills the subconscious and a sense of dynamic security permeates your being. Tomorrow I shall wake up filled with energy, creatively alive and in tune with the universe. Say this several times to yourself and feel the spiritual force begin to move. The life force begins to move within your body. You will wake up in the morning filled with creative energy, with the desire to be productive, to create. Answers to problems will be immediately unfolded from within yourself. You will experience finding solutions to questions that have been unanswered within your subconscious mind perhaps for years. A devotee having thus exercised this control over his mind to the point where when he commands the mind to be instantaneously creative or puts a time limit on it, tomorrow I shall be creative alive and in tune with the universe and his mind obeys, then has achieved a conscious control of the intuitive forces of the mind. He is truly all right in every now. And my comment, the last sentence again stresses the idea of affirmations can open us up to our intuitive creativity. Tomorrow I shall be creative, alive, and in tune with the universe. And his mind obeys, then has achieved a conscious control of the intuitive forces of mind. He is truly all right in every now. So again, to emphasize the point, affirmations can be thought of as just something we use to attract material abundance. But Gurudeva is saying that's part of it, but an even greater part of it is getting acquainted with our intuitive, creative mind and manifesting that in life situations. Thank you very much.